Hello and welcome. In this video, I plan on answering the age-old question that's been on everyone's mind but has never really been answered in-game. And that is, what are those blue medallions that we see in Doom Eternal? What function do they serve and why are they important for the lore? So without further delay, let's begin. Now the medallion that I'm talking about are the Argentan medallions that have a blue glow. And we see them when the Slayer throws it upon the body of a dead Hell Priest. These blue medallions have never been seen before in any previous Doom game. So they are a new addition into the Doom lore. And there is no codex entry that explains what they are. But there have been direct or indirect acknowledgements by some characters within the game as to what these medallions do. Now where and when do we see this first medallion? We see it in the very first level of Doom Eternal, Hell on Earth. The objective of this mission is to find and destroy the first Hell Priest, Deeg Nylox. This is to reduce the demonic invasion on Earth. And that is because the three Hell Priests, Nylox, Ranak and Grav, have conducted a blood ritual which gives Hell uncontested rule over Earth and allows them to invade without any interference. Now because of this blood ritual, to stop the invasion on earth, all three priests must die. Not a single one can be allowed to live. But this is where things get a little bit difficult. The priests, using dark arcane magic, have guarded their soul from destruction or consumption by the realm of hell. Therefore they cannot truly die until their soul is released from their body which also potentially gives them the benefit of immortality, as these three Hell Priests that I have mentioned before have been around even before the Slayer arrived on Argent Dinur. Now, on the topic of the medallion, prior to the game's story, the Slayer somehow managed to get Deeg Nylox's medallion, but it is never explained who or what he defeated in order to acquire this medallion. Now with this item in hand, the Slayer approaches the chambers of the priest, where a cinematic begins. He goes and grabs the Hell Priest within a split second. But as expected, the Hell Priest, in his arrogance, mentions that his... My soul remains guarded! <laughs> now it is important that this exchange between the Slayer and the priest is highlighted. Because when the Slayer then displays the medallion to the priest, we can see it vanish into thin air, almost in a way that the enchantment has now been lifted. At this stage, the Hell Priest is fearing for his life and starts to panic, but he is unable to break free of the Slayer's control. The Slayer then proceeds to finish him and take his head as an imminent warning to the other priests that are still on Earth. Then, at the end of the level, the Slayer finally catches up to the remaining Hell Priests that are currently in council with the Khan Maker. He then throws the head at their feet which causes them to cower in fear, after which they teleport away and retreat to their respective headquarters. After they retreat, they become far more difficult to locate, even by Vega. Then, as the story progresses, the Slayer finds the location of both priests. Deeg Ranak went into hiding in his Doom Hunter base, whereas Deeg Grav went back to Sentinel Prime. Now, as we approach the Doom Hunter base, Vega says something of great importance. The Hell Priest's position is stable now and his guardian is somewhere in the facility ahead. So based on this, and the fact that we have to fight the gladiator in Sentinel Prime, we can confirm that all three Hell Priests have or had a guardian that was tasked with holding on to their medallion, and all the guardians were physically quite powerful, because relying on being smarter would not have helped, since the Slayer has Vega and eventually Samuel Hayden on his side. Then, once the Slayer defeats the Doom Hunter, he then acquires the medallion, and in a very similar fashion, kills Deeg Ranak and throws the medallion upon his body. We can see the medallion vanish into thin air, and the same thing also happens when he kills Deeg Grav and his guardian. So based on the events in the game, we can surmise that these medallions are linked to their souls in some form or another. Now there are two theories that can potentially explain what these medallions are. One of the theories was made by the community a long time ago, and has generally been accepted as the most plausible theory. The other theory is something that I have created that I feel is more accurate. 
especially given the events of the Ancient Gods Part 1. So, the first theory is that these medallions houses a portion of the priest's soul. It could either be a small or a large soul fragment. There are two perfect examples of this in other forms of media. For example, in Harry Potter, Voldemort has seven or six horcruxes. These horcruxes are essentially inanimate objects that have been enchanted to house a small fragment of Voldemort's soul. This allows him to achieve immortality. The other best examples of this are soul gems that we find in the Elder Scrolls series. But how can we potentially confirm that the medallion hosts a soul? Well, apart from the very first exchange with the Hell Priest where he said that his soul was guarded, we only need to compare the blue glow of the medallion. And we can do this by comparing it to the blue glow in Necrovol Part 2 which is the facility that was created to rip the soul of a mortal away from its body. And when we compare the shade of blue that is used for the soul, it matches up quite well to the enchantment on the medallion. Now the theory goes on to say that if the Hell Priest dies through some other means, then the denizens of Hell can use dark magic to re-implant the soul back into the body. And if you couple that with cultist technology, they can bring back the body to life with the soul intact. A good example of this are the Doom Hunters and the Carcasses, but I need to mention that those demons are actually not alive in the conventional sense. They don't actually possess a soul. The cultists have used both technology and dark hell magic to fuse the flesh and machine together, and then they implant an AI to make those demons functional. But this theory then hits a roadblock, because as stated in the Book of the Seraphs Part 10, it says, Hell's machines can pull a soul from its body and process it into Argent energy, but Hell cannot return a soul to a body. It will never resurrect what it has consumed. But I believe this theory was on the right track, because my theory is that these medallions essentially function as a sort of a key, meaning that the host's body is effectively a prison that forcefully keeps the soul of the host within the body, preventing it from leaving if the body dies. That way, this theory satisfied what was said in the Codex entry, and because the soul never leaves the body, it is never consumed, nor is it ever processed into Argent energy. And this theory also satisfies the fact that when the Slayer gets a hold of the medallion, he is able to unlock the soul prison, and when he kills the priest, the soul can then leave the body without any impediments. But I think this theory does raise another question. Why not bury or hide the medallion somewhere really far away so that no one ever finds it? And I think there is a possibility that the medallion needs to be somewhat close to the host in order for the enchantment to remain functional. There have been many cases in other forms of media where if an enchanted object is taken too far away from the source, it will lose its influence and I think the same applies here. Secondly, the priests know for a fact that the Slayer is now hunting them. Therefore, in their paranoia, they want their guardians and their medallions to always be within arm's reach. Because that medallion is quite literally the key to their immortality and potentially their power. And that's all I have for this video. If you liked the video, make sure to like, comment and subscribe because all of these interactions help my channel within the YouTube algorithm. And as always, I will see you in the next one.